What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Sunday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great despite the time that we're living in. If you could please hit that like button. If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So what's up, what's up, what's up? I told you yesterday in my live that I'm going to do a video about Burnside Correctional Institute in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. So I did a little bit of reading on the place. It's called the Burnside Industrial Park in Dartmouth. And it's the biggest correctional institute in Nova Scotia. It holds about... All, just under 400, 370, 380 people, about 75% of which are male, maybe 80% are male. And uh, it's hard to find information about a lot of these prisons. But I have a guy that was uh, a friend of mine that has done an interview on the channel. Uh, and he sends me some clips and some stuff about the prisons over there and I thought this was a really interesting video and it it makes a bunch of points that I've told you how sometimes you're out of control when you're in prison you're not in control of the circumstances or the environment and sometimes that can backfire and put you in a real bad position and uh, I think this video shows that perfectly because I guarantee not every single person that was involved wanted to be involved or necessarily even really thought about it Sometimes these things are heat of the moment and there's real bad consequences. Now, after the video, we'll talk about exactly uh, what I think about it. But one thing I found really interesting was that this jail is built right beside a hospital called the East Coast Forensic Hospital, which isn't to serve the public. It's strictly to uh, serve people that are in correctional institutes or in the system, I guess. And they share facilities, which I thought is pretty cool. And the fact that if you get cooked in Burnside, they're going to be able to get you to medical facilities really quick, probably saves a lot of people's lives and actually might have saved this guy's life in this video. So it opened in 2001, which wasn't that long ago. It was about two years before Lindsay. So it's a fairly new joint. And uh, I'm not going to talk too much during the video. It's a pain in the ass to do all the editing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the video. Then after we'll talk about it, we'll get in depth and I'll give you my thoughts. So let's get her done. Mm -hmm. Good evening. It was over in a matter of moments, but it left one man badly beaten and some who witnessed it badly shaken. Two experienced corrections officers say they've never seen anything this bad before. It was an incident at the Central Nova Scotia Correctional Center in Burnside that happened in December of 2019. The trial for some of the people the accused in the case some, opened today. Which means many charges. Reports. It was the evening of December 2nd. An inmate had just been brought into the Burnside jail and placed in the North Unit, which was already housing about 30 other inmates. Less than 20 minutes after he arrived, the inmate was set upon by some of the others. A trial for six of the men accused in the beating opened today. The first witness showed security videos from inside the jail's day room. They show men milling about, then a few of them enter the cell of the new arrival and close the door. Sensing that something was going on, the two guards on the floor of the day room start heading to the cell, which is under a staircase. But as the guards approach, other inmates form a human wall, preventing the guards from getting close. One of them testified story. today he could hear a slapping sound that he says was hard to listen to because he knew someone was being hurt. As other guards approached, a voice from inside the cell could be heard saying, it's over, it's done, and the crowd started to disperse. Some could be seen outside the cell apparently celebrating. 
The guards started escorting inmates back to their cells and locking them inside. The victim was able to leave his cell under his own power, but he collapsed outside. He was rushed to hospital, but has recovered. The first two witnesses to testify, both experienced corrections officers, said they've never witnessed an incident as bad as this one. One guard says if he had tried to use force to disperse the crowd, he felt it would have turned into a full-scale riot. This trial would have been a challenge even without a pandemic. But because of COVID-19, the trial right? was being held in the convention center in downtown Halifax, in a cavernous room big enough to ensure all six accused, their lawyers, and the Crown all have enough space. There are two more trials to come to handle okay, the rest enough. of the accused. So, the judges said he... Basically, this dude walks into the joint. He's there for 20 minutes. He's attacked brutally in the cell. He's beaten. He's stabbed multiple times and when the officers who i guess are on the range all the time in this specific jail uh noticed the commotion and when they went to intervene they bo they formed a barricade of inmates to block those coppers now i don't know the inmates there i wasn't there i don't know what's going on but i know politicking i've been in prisons when there's politicking in jails when there's politicking and pretty much everybody has an idea of what's going on and what's expected of them prior to that happening. Now, sometimes you may not want to get involved at all in a situation like that. You might be terrified. You might not want to fight the guards because that could lead to that. That could lead to you getting sprayed, hit with billy clubs, shot with rubber bullets. It could lead to a very bad time, going to seg, getting beaten, getting disrespected, no food, food spit on, whatever the hell happens. Loss of all privileges, no phone calls, no none of that. Or what could happen, what happens in this case, which, which is, I guarantee you, all of that happened. Then a whole bunch of guys were charged. So there's some going to one trial, some going to another trial, and then there's a main trial with probably the main offender. So it's probably the main offenders and then some other guys that are just getting charged with some stuff for intervening, obstruction of justice, stuff like that, I bet you, uh, is what happened. Now... I don't know why this happened. I can only assume that if somebody comes into a prison, he's only there for 20 minutes, guys are plotting so seriously about getting him that they're even prepared to beef all the coppers to do it, then this person must have done something bad. So whether he snitched on somebody, robbed somebody, graped somebody, uh, ran off of somebody's... Uh, narcos, whatever it was that he did, he hurt somebody and made them want to get him. Now, he could have charges. That's also possible that people just know about. And he was placed on that range when he shouldn't have been, uh, which also can happen. So anybody who possibly watches these videos who could possibly get charged with a sex crime, and if that's the case, I hope you don't watch these damn videos. But if you do, Understand that if you get charged with a sex crime, nobody's going to protect you. The guards aren't going to protect you. They're going to throw you into dangerous situations. Maybe if you're in the federal system, maybe some places will allow you to go into protective custody. Super, super duper PC, considering the system is now integrated. So there really is no PC anymore. So you have to basically be special needs. Basically a high, high uh, focus inmate where you're 24 hour a day scrutiny and protection and, and being under the eyes of cameras and all that crap. Believe me, when I was in Joyceville reception, the last time I was in reception, there was a range on the second floor, which was only special needs PC. So these guys were not allowed to mingle with anybody else, but their common room was right there. So when people go up and down the stairs, people are batting them up, calling them calling them snitches, calling them goofs, calling them whatever to their faces, and they can't do nothing about it or don't want to do nothing about it. And if one mistake is made and somebody gets in that block, because that's where all the hounds are, that's where the head hounds of the pound are, uh, they're going to be serious problems. So that's something that these guys constantly have to think about looking over their shoulder. So if anybody ever watches these videos before you do a crime like that, think about that. Think about that. It could cost you your life, no problem. It's the goofiest thing you could do, and nobody's going to feel bad for you. But like I said, I can only assume what this guy did, 
But it's got to be something along those lines for these guys to be willing to go that far where they're on camera, going into the cell, no face covered, right in front of the feds, stabbing him, beating him half to death to the point where he was able to walk out but collapsed. He must have done something bad. And, and it, honestly, when, when you've done so much time and you've been around so many people getting hurt, you start realizing that they're not just being hurt to be hurt. That's, that's rarely the situation. Usually, they've done something real bad. They have real bad things on their jacket. And there's a reason. These things, are, it's not just a bunch of psychopaths running around that want to murder people for no reason, right? That's not how it goes. So, I, I don't think there really should be any compassion for a lot of these dudes. I think a lot of these dudes are on real bad and shady crimes, and a lot of the time, it, it makes people feel for them, even though they never felt for their victims. Um, I never expected anybody to be empathetic for me from community. I expected people to hate me. I expected people to think that I was a danger to society because those are the choices that I made. But a lot of people don't. A lot of people expect to just be forgiven right away. Everybody forget, despite what kind of weird crime you've done, and that the jail's going to protect them at every angle, whether they snitch, whether they have bad charges. So, like I said, I, I can tell by watching that video that this guy did something bad. He's not just an innocent target who is just picked on for no reason. And uh, honestly, I'd be interested to know why. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys, so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody goes back to prison. Nobody has to experience things like this, and that's what I do, but that's not a reality, especially in 2021. It's hard out here, and there's a lot of things that could lead to people getting locked up. People are hungry, there's a lot of addiction, there's a lot of job, uh, no job security for a lot of people, uh, and it's just a crazy place right now. So I can understand that's going to land some people in jail. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Hopefully my videos will help, but this video is a specific thing because I've said it in many videos before. Sometimes when you go to prison, you just want to do your own time and not be bothered by anybody and just go home. But sometimes things like this can get you dragged in, sucked in, and you may think that you're just going to be playing blocker and all of a sudden you have charges for assaults on officers or attempt murder because you played a role in this person getting stabbed. And these things can all happen. So think about your actions before you make decisions, whether in the community or in prison. That is something that's very important, something you should do before you make any decision in your life. Just think about yourself 10, 20, 30 years from now. And if you made this decision, how would that version of you feel about it? What would they say to you about it if they could come back and tell yourself? That was a horrible mistake. Just, you have to prioritize what's important to you in the long term, not in the short term. If you could please hit that like button, if you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button to so get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. They said they could hear the slaps. Those are hard shots. When you hear slaps like that, it's hard shots. Could be boots, could be stomps, and he was also stabbed. Now, I could be totally wrong. He could be a completely innocent person who just mouthed off to somebody and the range was just heated and hot. I don't know. But like I said, likely likeliest uh, situation is that this person did something wrong to somebody on that block, somebody who pulled a little bit of weight, and then this happens. And there's lots of people that are affected by it. There's consequences handed down to many, many, many people. And those decisions are made by a couple and forced onto everybody else. So if, before you go to prison, think about that. Love each and every one of you. The New Man Club.